First, create a polygon cube with 4 meters of height. In real life, a house is larger than this. But in this case, I'm going to do it in a small area. Go to edit mode and delete these vertices. Apply location, rotation, and scale as we are planning to add modifiers to this object. We don't want to mess anything up. Move these vertices along x-axis a little bit. Add a mirror modifier. So we don't need to model the front and the rear sides of the house separately. Make sure you turn off X and turn on Y. Also, turn on the clipping as well. Add a solidifier modifier with 0.15 meters of thickness. Turn on even thickness. Go to face mode and duplicate the top face and move it down along Z axis. This will be the top of the first floor. Add a cube and scale it down a little bit. I'm going to use this as a pole. Select all the faces and click on the duplicate. You can select multiple objects and move vertices, edges, or faces. Now add a mirror modifier to poles. Now we are going to create the floor. Start with the polygon plane. Go to edit mode and move it downward. Add a loop cut using the loop cut tool. Select this edge and go to the extrude tool. Press plus button in the viewport and drag it. As you can see it will extrude the edge in the wrong direction. So while dragging, press the Y button to extrude it along the Y axis. Select all the objects and extrude them along the Z axis. Add a polygon plane. Move it 90 degrees along the X axis. Place the object in the front. Select all. Click on the duplicate. While extruding the edge press X to extrude along X axis. Then extrude it along the Y axis. Select these faces and separate them. Add a mirror modifier with the Y axis on. First, select the last object we created. In my case, it's plane.001. Then select the object, to which we have added the mirror modifier recently, which is plane.002. Click join. As you can see both objects are joined now, and it has the same modifiers as the last object. Go to edge mode and extrude this edge along Y axis. I forgot to turn on the clipping in the mirror modifier. Select these faces. Go to face and inset them. I'm using 0.042 as the thickness. Inset these faces as well. Select these faces and separate them. Select this face and delete it. Select both these objects. Separate these faces. These faces will be windows. Select these frames and join them. Then add a solidify modifier. Let's increase the thickness. Select the window objects and join them. Go to face mode and move the faces inside a little bit. Then add a solidify modifier. Make sure you have enabled even thickness for solidify modifiers. Select windows and window frames. Duplicate these vertices. Move them downward.
Select this object and apply the Solidify modifier. As you can see there are some faces in the middle. It's because we didn't apply the mirror modifier before the solidify modifier. Delete them as we don't need them. You can join these objects if you like. Add a bevel modifier. Increase the segments. Add a plane. Move it downward. We will be using this plane as the ground. Use the extrude tool to extrude edges. While extruding press X or Y to extrude along the desired axis. Select these vertices and extrude them along the Z-axis. Separate these faces. Add a solidify modifier and increase the thickness. Add a bevel modifier and increase the segments. Turn on even thickness and apply the solidify modifier. We don't need the bottom part to be beveled. So delete the bottom faces. Let's move these vertices a little bit. I want to add wooden tiles between that window and the wall. Add a cube and go to edit mode. Now move the mesh. Add a mirror modifier as usual. Add a bevel modifier with the same settings as other objects. Now let's unwrap the cube. Go to UV Editing Workspace. Go to Edit Mode and select all the vertices. Go to UV and click on Smart UV Project. Now go to the Shading Workspace. Let's change the Render Engine to Cycles. Add a new material. Add an image texture. Connect it to the principled BSDF node. Add a mapping node. Add a texture coordinate node. Now open a wooden texture. In the UV workspace go to UV Island mode and rotate UV Islands as per your preference. Now select the floor mesh and go to edit mode. Unwrap it as usual. Add the same nodes to the material as the last one. Open a tile texture and increase the scale value as per your preference. Let's add more details to the tiles. Add a bump node and connect it like this. Add a color ramp node. Play with the color ramp node. Add another color ramp node and connect it to the roughness channel. White means full roughness and black means zero roughness. So we have to invert the color ramp node. Add some details to the wooden tiles too. Add a new material to the wall mesh. I'm going to change the color and roughness.
Add a new material to windows and change the shader to glass BSDF. When you go to render mode you can see how your model looks. Add a shiny material for window frames, which means a material with a low roughness value. Add a proper material to the fence and ground as well. You can use a texture for the ground. But I'm planning to put lots of grass so I'm not going to use any textures for the ground. Add a new plane. Select it and go to the local view. Now it's easy to work on this particular object. Create some shapes that look like grass leaves. You can duplicate the mesh a couple of times and change the shapes. It will add more variations to the leaves. Now exit the local view. Select these three objects and go to the local view again. If you scaled down the grass object make sure you apply the scale after scaling down. Let's place the grass object in the world origin. Select the ground plane. Go to particle properties. Add a new particle system. Change it to hair. Under the render option, change the render as settings to object. Choose your grass object as the instance object. Now you can see tiny grasses are populated on the ground. Turn on the advance option. Turn on rotation and set global X as the orientation axis. Or you can choose none. Let's make the emission number 100 and turn on interpolated under children. I think 1000 is a good value for emission number. Change render amount to 300. You can't see that now. But when you render the final output, you can see the result with 300 interpolated children. Now select the grass object. Add a new material. Go to the shading workspace. Change the color to green. Apply shade smooth for the grass object. Add a add shader. Then add a translucent shader. Connect it like this. Change the color. Decrease the roughness a little bit. As you can see, edges are not smooth. So apply Shade Smooth. For a better smoothing result, add a weighted normal modifier and turn on Keep Sharp. Turn on Auto Smooth. Do the same thing to the fence mesh as well. Add a camera and go to the Active Camera view. Place your camera as per your preference. I would prefer red camera settings for my camera. In the shading workspace, go to the world shading tab. Add an environment texture and open an HDRI image. I will put the link in the description. Exit from the active camera view. Add a polygon plane. Use the extrude tool to extrude edges around the house. Select the plane and go to the local view. Go to Blender Preference. Under Add-ons, turn on the Sapling Tree add-on. Go to Add, Curve, and click on Sapling Tree Generator. Load White Birch Preset. Go to the Branch Splitting tab. Increase the levels. Play with branch settings. Under the leaves tab, turn on show leaves. Change leaf shape to rectangular. Set the leaf scale x to 1 and the leaf scale to 0 0.6. 
Select the bark and the leaves. Go to the local view. Go to render mode. Add a new material to the bark. Open a proper bark texture. As usual, add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Change the settings as per your preference. Add a bump node. Do the same thing to leaves mesh. Just like we did to the grass shader, add a translucent node with an add shader. We are going to use a transparent shader so make sure your leaves texture has an alpha channel. Connect the alpha channel of the texture to the factor. Play with the roughness channel by adding a color ramp node. Add a color mix node for the color channel of the translucent shader. Set the color mix to multiply and change the factor to 1. Set the colors as per your preference. Exit the local view. Let's scale down the tree a little bit. Let's apply the scale. Usually Blender creates the bark and branches in curves. So, convert it to mesh. Make sure the name of the UV map of the bark and the name of the UV map of the leaves is the same. Join the bark mesh and leaves mesh. Add a particle system to the ground and make it hair. Set the number to 40. Set orientation axis to none. Choose the tree as the instance object. Play with the settings. I think my grass instance is too small. I'm going to increase the scale. I'm going to play with the setting of the grass shader. I forgot to add a divider to the house. So I'm going to add a simple divider as I didn't plan to model the interior. In the Shading Workspace go to the World Shading tab. Add a Vector Mapping node and a Texture Coordinate node. Connect them like this. Now you can rotate the HDRI map as per your preference. Go to the Render Properties tab. Set these settings to 32. I'm going to use 512 for the tile size. Now you can render the final output. 